Hello guys and welcome back to another super efficient build guide and today we're going to be producing 5 vanilla computers per minute which a fair few of you have been asking for. I should mention that we will be using 290 plastic so you might want to check out our plastic guide we did previously and it works in multiples of 100 so you might want to build it 3 times and attach an overflow splitter to this build to siphon off the excess. Before we get started you can find this layout build in a written format and many other guides on our website satisfactorytips.com to help you with any struggles you may have. So let's get started. For this build you will need a 9 deep by 22 wide grid, 290 plastic per minute, 245 copper ore, 65 iron ore, 12 smelters, 27 constructors, 7 assemblers and finally 2 manufacturers along with about 371 megawatts. To start we will place all the smelters down spanning the first and second row. We shall place a smelter in the 1st, 2nd, 3rd and 4th column as well as the 6th and 7th, 9th and 10th, 12th, 15th, 17th and 19th column. Note that the 13th and 14th column are painted blue in this and this is where we will be importing our items. The 245 copper ore will go to the left on a mark 3 line and the center will be for the 290 plastic requiring a mark 4 conveyor line and on the right hand side we will have the 65 iron ore per minute on a mark 2 conveyor line. At this point we will want to place a manifold line of splitters feeding each of the copper smelters on the left with each splitter flowing to the left. We shall also do the same with a manifold line on the right flowing to the right for all the iron smelters. Now as we are using the manifold system it will take a while for the whole factory to start running at 100% efficiency. So if you want to know why that is I do recommend checking out my video on manifolds versus load balancers in the top right hand corner. Returning to the build in front of the smelter in column 2 we will place a merger flowing forwards and in front of all other smelters with the exception of the first and last smelter in column 1 and 19 we will place splitters flowing forwards. At this point we shall focus specifically on the copper line. With the copper smelters all set to copper ingots we will need to set the first smelter in the first column to a 17% underclock. We shall now connect the first smelter and the left hand splitter output that is in front of the third smelter to the merger in front of the second smelter. Next we shall place the constructor line for the copper sheets starting in the third column of the third row along to the twelfth column. We will place our ten constructors. These will all be set to copper sheets. In front of each constructor's inputs there should be a splitter with the exception of the fifth, eighth and eleventh column. In these columns place a merger flowing into the constructors in line with the splitters. Next we shall connect each of the remaining copper smelters with the splitter and constructor in front of them. Now connect the neighboring splitter output with the mergers adjacent and then connect the merger to the constructor in front. Your build should now look a little bit like this. We shall now merge each of the copper sheet constructors together and flow the merging line to the right. To do this merging line I've placed the merger two steps in front of each constructor and stacked it twice with the outputs flowing to the right. If done correctly you can now connect a conveyor elevator from the constructor to the top merger and delete the mergers underneath this. With copper sheets completed we will move to the copper wire and cables section. For the wire we shall place three constructors in the sixth row spanning the first and second, 
second and third, and the third and fourth column. In front of the middle constructor, place a splitter and connect the merger in front of the second smelter with this splitter and ensure each output is connected to the constructors. These constructors will be set to wire and on the other side of the constructors merge the wire together and from here connect this to a splitter in front and split between two more constructors which should be placed in the centre of the second and third column in the penultimate row. Note that between the merger and the splitter you will need to use a Mark II line and these constructors will both be set to cable and should both be set to 75% underclock. Finally, merge these two constructors together with a merger flowing to the right to be used later on. With this being a vanilla build, we shall next be sorting out the rod and screw line, although I do recommend using screw alternatives where applicable. For this screw section, we will need to place 12 constructors, 5 for the rods and a further 7 for the screws. Start by placing 5 constructors in front of the splitters we placed in the smelting line. The constructors should start from the third row of the 15th column and proceed to the 19th column. Each splitter should be connected to two constructors with a single constructor placed in front of the last smelter. The last smelter in the iron smelting row should also be set to 17% underclock and the iron rod constructor in front of it should subsequently be set to 33% clock speed. Once done, we shall place a merging line flowing to the right of the grid. Make sure to set all these constructors to iron rods. Once done, we shall place a second line of seven constructors. They will be placed against the mergers with their inputs spanning the two columns. Start by placing the first constructor in the 15th and 16th column through to the 21st and 22nd column. Once placed, set all the constructors to iron screws. The first constructor will be set to 50% underclock. In order to feed these constructors, we will place splitters along the merging line flowing towards the right and we will then connect all of these along the merging line and feed them into the constructors. Note that we are merging 65 items per minute on this line, but because we are splitting at the same time, we do not need to worry about using a Mark II belt. Now that the constructor line is complete, we will need to merge all the screw lines together. With 260 screws on this line, we will need to ensure that we're running at least a Mark III belt. We will now work on the circuit boards. For this, we will need to place seven assemblers along the fifth row, being fed by plastic and the copper sheets we produced earlier. To get the right positioning, we will place a splitter directly in front of the copper sheet merging line's last merger in the 12th column. This is stacked twice high so that we have a direct connection between the mergers and the splitter. Now do note that this merger should be the only one in the merging line that's facing forwards. We will now place an assembler down so that the first input, the left one, is in line with this splitter. In order to get the right positioning though, we will need to move the assembler three spaces towards the top of the grid and then place it down. If done correctly, we should now be able to make a direct link between the splitter and the assembler with a conveyor elevator. With that assembler placed, we now need to place six more assemblers in a row to the left of this one, and you will also want to place splitters in front of each of the assembler's left inputs in the same manifold line. Next, we shall split the plastic between the circuit boards and eventually the manufacturers. To do this, 
place a splitter on the ground in line with the assembly splitting line that we've just placed. As we are running a manifold system, this line will fully saturate. Do not worry about this. Uh, next, place splitters in front of the right input of each splitter and connect the lines together. Once all assembler inputs are connected, we will place a merging line flowing to the right on the other side of the assemblers to run circuit boards to the manufacturers. These assemblers should all be set to circuit boards and the last assembler in the line should be clocked at 67% clock speed. Last but not least, we need to place two manufacturers and these will be for the computers. I've placed mine so that the manufacturers are facing forwards starting in the 13th column through to the 17th column with space enough for a container in between. The manufacturers are placed just below midway of the 7th row and the positioning should look a bit like this. From here, I have placed splitters in between the two manufacturers. The first splitter is on the ground floor for the screws and splits into the closest two inputs. The second splitter is stacked too high so that we can use elevators to feed the manufacturers. And the third and fourth splitter are also stacked above these and use the elevators in a similar stepped system. With that out of the way, the last thing that we need to do is connect the input lines and our first input is for the screws. I've placed a merger flowing forwards at the end of the screw line and this line will connect with the first splitter. We then have the 90 plastic that we split off from the main line. Now this should be brought to the second splitter via elevator. We then have the cables which we will route around the top of the build to the manufacturers and use an elevator to get it to the right height as the third splitter. And finally, we will bring the circuit boards up to the fourth splitter. The two manufacturers should now produce five computers per minute, which I've merged and sent to a container for storage. So there you are, guys. Sorry it was a longer video than normal, um, but if you do want a step-by-step -step written guide of this video, um, check out our website. We'll have photos on there as well to help out with the explanation. It's satisfactorytips.com. The link is below. Anyway, guys, if you did enjoy this video, please do hit the thumbs up. And obviously, if you want to see more, why not join me on Twitch? and subscribe to me on here. If you do want to catch me live, my current schedule is now listed below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. And as always, until next time, ciao for now.